we're here today at Horseshoe Island. This location is one of the premier spots in all of New Jersey for coastal avian species. Birds that are nesting, birds that are migrating. If you're looking to take a break, this is the spot you want to be. We're offshore Little Egg Inlet, which is the home to many beautiful pristine areas that are managed by the Edwin B. Forsyth National Wildlife Refuge. So already the landscape nearby is excellent for wildlife. Over the last few years, it has formed into a horseshoe shape and over time, the birds have responded spectacularly. We all know that inlets are critical habitat for avian species. There are no mammal predators. You have the ability to be away from human disturbance. And so we knew that birds were gonna respond to this. Starting in 2021, biologists were able to come out from a variety of organizations and partnering groups that are working together to protect this area to document the use of it by avian species. We're seeing even more species use it in 2022. So we're gonna take you on a little tour today. We're gonna to show you the nesting birds, the migrating birds, the birds that are using this habitat that is so critical in New Jersey. Horseshoe Island presents us with a, an important and unique conservation opportunity. It's one of the only locations in New Jersey that is free of human disturbance uh, since it was closed to the public this year. In addition, it's perhaps the only spot we have right now that has no mammal predators in it. So mammal predators like fox, coyote, raccoon. Here, this is a unique spot, one of the only in the state of New Jersey where there are not mammals that can predate the young or the eggs of our nesting shorebirds. The island is home to a number of endangered and threatened species. Uh, among them are black skimmers, least terns, which are state endangered. It's the only location in New Jersey that has royal terns. There are also American oyster catchers. And although piping plovers and red knots are not nesting at this location, both are present in pretty significant numbers here to forage or stage for migration. So far this year, it's one of the most successful locations as well. And we think that uh, some of that can be attributed to the fact that the island is closed to the public. So there is no human disturbance. The colonial nesting species, so the black skimmers, least terns and common terns, nesting here on Horseshoe Island. It has been the uh, most successful location for them in the state this year. The only royal tern colony. Um, there are also American oyster catchers nesting here, 10 pairs. Uh, so it's the most successful or one of the most successful, significant American oyster catcher locations this year. Something that's very unique about beach nesting birds, that's something that people find very hard to understand, is that they lay their eggs directly on the sand. Not only that, they don't want a lot of vegetation around them when they're doing that. So at first glance, you might think about that and say, seems like a terrible strategy because you're leaving them what appears to be so vulnerable to all sorts of issues like predators or the elements. But if you think about the system that we're in, the coastal system, it's a highly dynamic environment. It's constantly changing, storms are coming in and out, and the land masses are never stable. So these are all species who have evolved to adapt to that type of system. Laying their eggs right in the sand doesn't sound like a good idea, but actually is. Because what happens is those eggs become very camouflaged with the sand. So you're looking at Horseshoe Island and you say, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of vegetation, there's not plants or trees or anything for them to nest in, but that's not what they're looking for. What they want is exactly what this island is providing, which is open sandy habitat where they can lay those eggs right in the sand. If you think about the way islands used to be, long before people were here and we brought all of the disturbance and the development that came along with us, there wasn't really mammalian predators. So if your eggs were directly on the sand, it's not a problem. What you were worried about were the avian predators that were flying along above looking down. And so if you're laying your eggs right on the sand and they blend in perfectly with that backdrop, that's a pretty good strategy. And so that's what we're seeing is happening out here. There are no mammal predators, there's only the old avian predators, and the sheer volume of adults that are nesting here, those avian predators can't keep up. And so that strategy is working out really, really well here. So when you're looking out and you're saying, it just looks like a pile of sand, that is exactly what beach nesting birds are looking for and what is so hard to come by in the state of New Jersey these days.
I'm a member of the monitoring team that works to help monitor Horseshoe Island. I work with a great team of biologists whose job is to protect and study the birds that are actually nesting and foraging here. So I was on the team in 2021 that boated out here when we sighted birds that were noticeably on the island. And when we boated out here, we actually discovered a whole swath of eggs and birds of different species. And that's when we kind of discovered that this island may be very suitable habitat for colonial nesters. Our staff comes out, we try for twice a week, so once in the midweek and then once on a weekend. Basically, we're counting every single bird that is inside the colony. We want the count of the total birds and the count of all of the incubating birds. So the count of the incubating birds, and we can tell based on their posture, how they're sitting, is going to give us an estimate of how many nests there are. Once the eggs hatch, we also need to count all the chicks that are present. So we'll count the number of downy chicks, which means they were freshly hatched, the number of feathered chicks, so they're slightly older, and then the, the number of fledged chicks, which means they've reached the age where they're old enough to fly. By the end of these counts, our number of fledged chicks is gonna give us a good idea of how productive our colonies were, because ideally you want as many chicks as possible to fledge. What's also really wonderful about this spot is that the Fish and Wildlife Service has been working with our state partners and with universities for years now to identify things that concern us about shorebirds in general. And one of the biggest things is disturbance by people, by dogs, and harassment from predators. So we've been working together to identify sites that we can be sure that the birds can have nesting area, resting area, and Horseshoe Island is absolutely one of those sites. We know now how important it is to protect sites like this for birds if we want to see them into the future. So far this year, Horseshoe Island has had over 2,000 birds nesting on it. It's an incredible um, number of birds nesting here, uh, exceeding what we had last year. Um, and so again, it speaks to the importance of trying to conserve and protect this island from human disturbance. The whole area from the intertidal zone from the barrier islands and the mainland out to three miles offshore is state of New Jersey property and it is managed by the Tidelands Resource Council, including the property that Horseshoe Island is on. Beginning in 2022, we took what could be considered a drastic step of closing the island to human disturbance from March 1st through September 30th. This is the peak period of shorebird migration, southbound and northbound, as well as during the breeding season. There is almost nowhere in the state that this is the case. And in many places, we do our absolute best to try to share the shore, to make sure that people and wildlife can coexist. But we know even when we're doing that, the wildlife is taking a little bit of a hit. So when you have a place like Horseshoe that is so critically important to many, many endangered species, we know that that closure is going to directly benefit them and in a big way because of the sheer number of birds that are using this site. 2022 is the first year that we have attempted this closure and we really want to thank the public so much for helping us make that a success. We are seeing use of the entire island now, which is not something we were seeing in previous years. And having that extra bit of habitat to allow these birds to flourish so that in other places in the state, we can continue to try to walk that balance and walk that fine line of people and wildlife sharing. This is a place that is just for wildlife. And so we want to thank you so much for your appreciation of the wildlife of New Jersey and to helping do your part by staying away just for that time period so that we can have these birds be as successful as possible.